All right, let's look back at some of the more volatile earnings from last night. We got a pop and trade desk, but real give back. And DoorDash and Roku join us. Jason Helstein is managing director and head of internet research at Oppenheimer Co. All right, Jason, uh, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Uh, let's start with the positive here. Trade Desk seemed like a big report for this company after treading water the last year on the chart. Uh, is this a real turning point for them? We, we think it is. Um, there's really been two concerns that investors have had. One was that as Amazon Prime launched video ads, that would um, flood the market with content in addition to Netflix. And obviously Netflix has already been in the market, but Amazon was launching at the end of January. And then the second concern that investors have had was as Google removes cookies um, over time, that would be a, a, a negative. And I guess number one, we're not seeing any impact of video right now, which really shouldn't have been a huge surprise. But but moreover, the company put out specific kind of uh, uh, data that they, they've kind of found, whereas as they've tested um, kind of cookie deprecation, if you use their identity solution, you can actually increase monetization 30% versus seeing a 30% monetization decline if you don't use any identity solution. And the fact that they were willing to kind of put a specific number out there um, combined with basically telling investors that revenue growth in 24 would be faster than 23, I think kind of shut the bear case down for now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that looks like a shut the bear case down candle uh, for the week for sure. Uh, can we get back to all time highs for the trade desk? Probably, um, you know, the, the company's, you know, revenue, you know, call it mid 20s revenue growth, margins are over 40%, continue to increase, you know, they're going to continue to buy back stock. It kind of, it, you know, if you look at it on cash flow, it's cheaper than a lot of software companies. So, mm. yes, I, I think this can make new highs. Okay. Uh, there's still enough of a pie. Uh, to be shared in the uh, advertising world. There were some worries, maybe the kind of we were maxing out a little bit uh, a year and a half ago, kind of post COVID, but I guess with uh, all the streaming services now going ad supported, that helps. That does help. And remember something like 88% of this company's revenue is still in the U S it's very early um, for them internationally. So I think that will be a multi-year growth driver. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go over to Roku. It seems like this company's weighted. My kind of armchair analysis is that a lot of the last year in growth businesses was about cleaning up the balance sheet, turning the profit. It seems like they still haven't uh, been able to prioritize that. I know it was intentional for a while. They wanted to grow, they wanted to grow, but like now uh, can they turn it into the black? Can they stay positive for a couple quarters or what? I mean, I think it's it's not just positive. I mean, they are got into positive cash flow. The problem is to justify the valuation. You need you need you know to look at still several years and say you can get back to kind of a fifteen percent margin, which which you know they, they actually beat during COVID when they had huge revenue growth and kind of like hadn't expected it. Um, so look, I think they can get back to a, a, a mid teens margin over time, but you know you're talking about looking out you know call it twenty twenty seven. Um, in the interim, investors are going to focus on their advertising or platform revenue growth. And that number is very likely to actually be in the single digits as they go up against um, particularly difficult comps in the third quarter. And we're seeing a, a still an impact from the Hollywood strike. I mean, there's some thoughts that media and entertainment spending won't be back to normal, maybe until the fourth quarter, because remember media usually doesn't spend heavily in the third quarter. And then um, you're probably not gonna get any price increases on streaming services in 24, right? That was kind of more of a 23 story. And then new services, like for example, the sports bundle that's been talked about, that would be a 25 event. So you're really looking at 24 as, as kind of a lack of tailwinds. And then you're going against um, some pretty significant comps as you move into the back half of the year. So we just think that investors need to see 20% advertising growth to want to believe in the long-term margin. Okay. It doesn't seem like they're a leader in anything right now. Am I wrong? I mean, they're not really a leader in hardware well, anymore. Well, they are the leader in U.S. streaming engagement, right? So streaming they, have engagement? 80 million, they have 80 million streaming households, right? They're by far and away the number one provider. There's just no other company uh, streaming platform who, who's close to them. Um, so people are using it. The problem is they're struggling to monetize the advertising. One of their initiatives is to be more open and support third-party demand like Trade Desk, mm. like Google. 
um, but they were late to that party. And those integrations are complicated. They take time. Everyone's very focused on this whole cookie deprecation. So Roku may not be getting, let's say, prioritization within advertising technology right now. And so that should fill in and help them. But again, that may be kind of more fourth quarter next year. And I think the stock is probably just in a holding period for now. So they've got, because so many people got their set top boxes, they've got the highest number of advertising eyeball potential through that streaming world. Do the advertisers, though, not also have to make a decision on where they put their ads? Do they put it through a streaming service? Do they do it through a social media channel? It seems like Roku would be competing with bigger advertising giants on the internet. Is that a, a, a fair comparison? Sure. I mean, it, you know, like they are not considered um, kind of a leading platform to buy directly, right? So you have to buy Meta, you have to buy Alphabet, right. you have to buy Trade Desk, right? Like you have direct relationships with NBC Universal, with Paramount, right? Um, you know, Roku has some very interesting features that they can do with data. They can kind of do, you know, couponing while you're watching TV. They can kind of really take it to the next level. But again, it's not considered a must buy and, and kind of many advertisers would like to buy them through existing platforms like a trade desk, like a Google, right? Because take that data that you already have and, and you, or even Amazon, right? Take all that mm -hmm. retail data and kind of activate and buy through Amazon. That's where the industry has been going. So again, if you have the eyeballs, you will eventually um, have, have a place it's just right now, they're considered kind of a second tier uh, location to go to get viewers. Got it, okay, uh, that's very helpful. So their growth engine of advertising, they're in a category where they've got a lot of proofing still to do basically. Um, Correct. But it sh should come, all right, it might be a waiting game then. Uh, hey, real quick, can you give me the 60 second on DoorDash? Cause the market's been loving Uber and it seems like they're hoping DoorDash is gonna follow, but do the numbers look as good as Uber? You got to remember, this stock was up 28% uh, into earnings versus the NASDAQ 6%, right? So, um, and it, it kind of ran on, on Uber. So just significant enthusiasm. Uh, they did do 20%, 22% uh, gross order value, uh, gross in the quarter. That was a two-point slowdown from third quarter. They guided first quarter at 18, but then they guided the full year to 14, right? So, you know, basically, they're telling investors, look, for now, they see a significant slowdown in drones order value. And, you know, for a stock that's reasonably expensive and expectations were high, that's that that's the main issue there. Got it. All right. Jason, great stuff. Thanks for the details. Thank you. Jason Elfstein, Managing Director, Head of Internet Research at Oppenheimer & Co.